Hello, everyone. Welcome. You are listening to A Chance to Strive. My name is, I think you guys already know this by this point, right? Um, normally, I'm by myself. But like I said on the last episode, I'm going to try to bring you guys a lot different, more perspectives. At this point, it's like, I know there's a lot you guys can learn from me. There's a lot I'm constantly learning. But one of the most amazing things about me, you know, it's like I like to extract information and I want to offer you guys an opportunity to kind of do that from different people instead of me kind of like I extract and I give it to y'all. You know, I'm gonna let y'all do the work yourselves for a little bit. I got trust. All right. So back over to you. Introduce yourself. Hello, friends. Hello. Hello. My name is that girl, Luli. And a little about me. I do a little bit of everything. So I recently just produced my own short film, wrote All it, right. directed it, starred in it. It's about to come out soon. So <laughs> talk about that, you know, another day. But follow me for more. And I'm also a where? motivational speaker follow at That where? Girl Luli. Yeah, all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And that's that girl, like normal I English. that girl, though. Yeah, right. T-H-A-T-G-I-R-L. Because people be like, that girl. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, no, <laughs> try to put yous and stuff. No, 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 no. So that girl, Luli, all social media platforms. Um, but I'm in the process, too, of transitioning when it comes to my style of content because after doing my short film, it's just something that really attracted me. So acting, modeling, motivational speaking, life coaching, all that good stuff. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. I appreciate you. Very thankful to have you here. Um, so literally in terms of like, do I really, I don't know her that much, right? <laughs> I don't know really that much. Um, we literally have had a few exchanges on social media and one long ass FaceTime call. <laughs> literally, it was kind of like an introduction to see, so like, was. let's extract your mind real quick. Let's see what you be thinking. Um, that's actually one thing, like the first part we're going to start with. There's one thing about our conversation yesterday where it's like, I told you this. I like humbling women that are very, you know, how do I say this? Delusional at times. I'm using that word just so people don't think, oh, I just be trying to humble women. No, no. You really got to be on some delusional shit for me to be like, nah, we, we got to check the way you think real quick. Mm. But I do believe a lot of certain individuals at times when you're not at a certain point in your maturity, it's like you're a little unrealistic with expectations, what you should be given and how you're supposed to earn that. And... One thing I realized is like, as we're going back and forth, you know, it was a low. <laughs> and one thing I was like, I thought at a certain point, I'm not going to hold you. The more we spoke, I was like, damn, this might be slightly unreal, an unrealistic way of thinking. But I was like, hmm, this person is just very optimistic and it comes with her faith. I'm not saying go into your relationship with God and all that, but mm -hmm. it's like, you know, like the part we kind of stuck mm. at with the curveballs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of like talk about your outlook on life and like what you expect to receive. And you can based yeah. on our conversation, you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. I, I do. I do for sure. Um, it's funny because I get that a lot. Like, I wouldn't say that we were like opposed, but a lot of people, they have an impression almost as though it's not possible. Right. But like me being this way and I'm going to get a little further into what I mean by that. <laughs> but me on. being this way, there has to be more people like that. Right. So I believe in true love. I believe that it's work, you know, like anything. Right. But like I love my craft, but I wake up every morning. I do what I have to do for my craft, like for whatever it is I want to do in life. I believe that when you have a faith connected and aligned to whatever it is that you believe in, but you're 10 toes down with it everything is going to be in your favor. Like, I really do believe that because now you're contributing back into the universe. So that's why I wouldn't settle. I wouldn't settle with anything. If I'm not happy somewhere, like even if my craft goes exactly where I want it to and I get to the top of that mountain and I look around and it's awful, I'm going to keep going. And it's cool. Like, you got to go with the flow, you know? Actually, I think this is one thing I spoke about a little bit last time. The way you said that was like, like it was so easy, right? <laughs> but we are well aware of the fact that the idea of climbing up a mountain and then letting it go, mm -hmm. knowing that you did all this climbing. Duele. Speak on that. Because for Duele. me, I'm not going to lie. So it's like the rebranding is something I kind of spoke on. It's like when you're having to let go of everything, you kind of worked up. It's not like everything, but it's like, let's just say this one thing that was a lot that went into it. And now you're like, it didn't bring me where I wanted to. So it's like the journey, the lessons and all of that. Great. But it's like, how do you give up being on that mountaintop? Mm, mm, mm. That's a good one. Uh, so I, I would say like, and you know, you spoke a little bit about expectations. Um, 
I would say that was a big one for me was that sometimes my vision would get blurred by my own like resilience to keep going with the vision. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you really just, it, that's it, you're beating a dead horse. You know what I mean? And it doesn't matter if it's a relationship, a job, if it's an idea, an invention, whatever it is that you want to put a twist to it's like after a while you're dragging it with you and it's, it's making it harder for you to climb that mountain, whatever that mountain is. So I personally started to realize like, for example, I recently just got into music. <laughs> Let's start there. Like that was Star never, fresh. man, that was never something that I ever saw myself doing. But for years, people have been like, I love your voice. You should sing. You should do this. People would catch me singing and be like, oh, nah, you could sing. Like, so I'm like, you know what? The industry right now, no shade, but it's, it's polluted, you know? Like, so why not give out that message? But I feel like if you're going to be in a place in your life where you can't let go of certain things that are like, more of a like a layer of old skin yeah then you're never gonna like be able to really succeed in anything it's about get you. absolutely and that's the thing it's like some people aren't aware of like how much you can carry on you know mm. it's like you carry all that shit thing it's like there are certain things that are just gonna stick with you and you can't just drop it can't. it would just be unfucking realistic and we kind of spoke about the whole this is one thing we kind of spoke on it's like for me a healing process is like it's a lifelong process because things will constantly happen. You have to heal. I have to heal from certain things because of the past years of my five years of my life. Once I get to that point in the next five, there's some shit that's going to happen that I'm going to have to keep on going. It's like, mm -hmm. and this is why I say it's like, understand how to do this process and how to do this work. It's not about what's wrong. You may not do a whole lot of shit. That's fine. I was that way at a certain point. And then it's like, boom, 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 boom. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, you know, it's like everybody says it's like, I feel like everything's f falling apart right now. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. I feel like Dame, I, I haven't met a person who's like at this point, especially like you're in your middle 20s or some shit like that. It's like, for you to say, it's like, I have never gone to a point where I feel like everything is falling apart. Because the thing yeah. is, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. So it's like, for sure. It's hard not to get to that point. But I think when you do get to that point, too, you get, you get almost to, to a place where you're like facing yourself because yeah. like on my hand I have, we talked about this, chosen yeah. one, the light and dark. And my name, you know, I told you guys that girl Luli. I've had Luli since before I came out the womb, you know, but Luz is my real name and it means light in Spanish. And all my life I've been the type of person that I've practiced that and I've tried to approach everything in life with love and light. But then I realized like I have darkness too. And it wasn't until I was faced with myself in my darkness that I was like, wait, it's kind of comfortable here. I'm like, since when do I say that? And I realized it's because, you know, and I actually made a video about this. Like when people talk about other people, it's so easy to point the finger and be like, you're a narcissist. You're angry. You're this, you're that. But guess what? It's Probably a tendency, right? Yeah. Of course, I can sit in front of a therapist right now, get evaluated, and they're going to be like, you're narcissistic because by definition, it's somebody who thinks highly of themselves. Absolutely, I think highly of myself, you know? But I know I'm no better than you, and you're no better than me. So, like, part. you can't, I, I can't really point, the, I could say, hey, you, right now, you're giving me narcissistic vibes, or you have a, a narcissistic tendency in this moment. You're acting this way, but you're not that. People because I can that do that. People do not think that They way. don't think that way. <laughs> they love to label because it's easier for me to say that you're the demon. Then it's when not, we it's, all have it. It stops right there. There's it no stops more right thinking. there. It's like. Someone else's fault. No, I'm not like that. <laughs> I see both sides of the spectrum. And also, like, don't get me wrong, I could get spicy. You know, if we have, like, I like to debate. You know that now. For sure. <laughs> he knows that now. <laughs> but, like, if we're having, like, an actual discussion and there's, like, someone's hurt or there's a reason for this and it's serious, I understand. You know, especially if it's something where you're like, hey, you made me feel this way. I'm, I'm not going to be like, well, I can't make you feel any type of way. You're your own person, like. Be for real. Come on. You're being condescending. <laughs> be for real. Right? You did something. And I feel something. But wait, let's talk about it. So I'm the kind of person to be like, oh, I get that. Like if I was, because sometimes you do things you don't realize. Yeah. You know? It's like a lot of people don't really want to give you benefit of the doubt because people are like so stuck on feeling validated by their pain. And it's like at a certain point, it's like once you get that acknowledgement, what else do you fucking need? No offense. <laughs> like I get it. If I acknowledge your pain, I, I acknowledge what was done. And this is kind of like something we briefly mentioned. It's like, for me, it's like when there's a situation with a couple, it's like, it's not me against you because I hurt you or because you hurt me. 
something happened. We're saying we want to be together, and this is the future we're choosing. Bet. So we're a team. I bet. There's an obstacle in our way. I don't see how we have to get on opposite sides to solve it. <laughs> like that fuck that doesn't make sense. My thing is like it's us against the problem. Mm-hmm. Which means we're gonna talk about the hurt that was done. And then if it's us against the problem, it's like we have to make sure we have a way for this shit not to happen again. Mm-hmm. So why don't we also speak on triggers? A lot of people's like, mm-hmm. I'm hurt right now, so make the conversation about me and just me. All right. At, okay, towards the end. Okay. Now do we talk about what kind of led me to do this? Because mm. if I'm not this person and it's just a tendency, right? Shouldn't you find a way to try to help? Absolutely. And the thing is, it's like the idea that you shouldn't be the person bettering your partner. Bro, I don't think a lot of people realize it's like certain people I'm don't realize out. certain things about them until Man. they're in a relationship because of how much is brought to light. It's like you won't see it with your parents because at times you can't speak to them. Boom. You're not fucking this person. Like I, literally there's a whole nother portion that's added when you're having sex with somebody. How could I ever focus on my relationship with sex, right? And love. <laughs> Until I'm in a relationship. If I'm fucking random shorties, it's like, there's no love. That's there's just nothing. me still having a bad relationship. With Absolutely. Sex and not understanding it. And now I'm with you. It's like, oh, but I don't. Random. Oh, you cheated. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. I'm not saying you should forgive that or anything like that. But if this is the person you're with and they have never shown you that they were this person, right? They did something once and that's it. I personally... We don't have to get that far as cheating, but like, let's just do some slick shit. And you're like, nah, people just blow up on like the little smallest shit that you possibly do. But you know what? That's important because it's one of those things that some people don't understand that triggers can trigger other triggers. So, you know, I don't condone cheating either, but it's one of those things where like, if I was in a 10 year relationship and I'm not saying like, who, whoever my husband about to be, you better not use this against me. But if I was in a 10 year relationship, right? And we have children and like, it's really been a dope relationship. We've had a dope bond. There's really been nothing wild. Like I would hope that me and my partner would have the type of relationship where he would come to me if he was having temptations before anything yeah. happened. But if that's not the case, then I would at least, first of all, I want you to tell me, I don't want to find out through nobody else. But like, now I want to find out not why because of her because I don't there's no competition right like I don't look at anybody that way yeah. but I need to know like what was it because some people keep it simple like oh well it got boring like oh well you know the spark no that you guess what you haven't hugged me or caressed me in years like that's things that people don't tell people I'll give an example because this is some real stuff that happened like on social media yeah. Boris Kojo and his wife were having a live and she ended up mentioning a comment where it was like, oh, like, you know, he doesn't come up behind me anymore when I'm washing the dishes and he doesn't hug me. And whatever. And of course, you know, as a man, I get it. There's another couple that they were talking to. So that man's like, damn, Boris, you got to make sure you do that. Yet. Like, you know, so as a man, he felt salty. But as a woman, she definitely should have done that in private. But I understand like her emotion behind like, damn, you know, because she doesn't want to have to ask. But same difference. That's why men go cheat. Because they don't want to have to tell their girl, like, yo, you used to, like, put a little cute little song away for me. Like, you know, you cook for me, whatever. Like, now this girl's cooking in her moo. Like, it's cool. You know, baby, do that, like, here and there. Put your put your thing on. Like, whatever. But, like, your man met you. You had nails. You had hair. You had this. Your body. Da, da, da. Like, I get it. You had babies. Things change. But it'll keep it together. <laughs> keep it together. Because guess what? He's still spicy. He got an eight pack. He's going out. He's fine as hell. And now he 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 giving good dad vibes. Ay, Dios mío, te lo llevan con, la, con el viento volando loca. Like, the wind's gonna come and sweep them up. And it's not, I'm not saying you're not a good woman. I'm not saying that, you know, it's, it's okay. I'm not saying none of that. But you have to understand the human, the temptation, the flesh. is just normal. Especially, men are known to be visual creatures. Very much so you want to keep a man? You better de- you can get them squads going. Do your thing. Like, eat some asparagus after the baby for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, come back from the Oreos. I get it. You want to feel comforted. And now you don't feel comfortable in your body, but that's that's why I think people sometimes cheat, man, because people don't get what they got in the beginning. And that's the whole point. If I sign a contract with you, and then all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to pay your cut in half. I don't be like, what the fuck is it? You feel me? <laughs> what you doing? Come on. I'm going to look for it wherever that cut was. I'm going to get it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like, and we kind of spoke about like this whole idea of being unrealistic in terms of expectations, like what women want from a man and they don't really have much to show for it. Mm. My thing is, it's kind of like, I wish that it was very much drilled into certain people's like, it's okay that you are asking for all these things, but it's like, 
all of this is worth how much? I got to be willing to offer something of equal value. It's not like at times it's like, oh, you got to be anything I ask you. You got to be sometimes we're different people. The fact that we're together and our dynamic, we, we can rock each other's boat a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. I, I lack this way, but then you come in. And it's mm -hmm. not the fact that we just keep it this way. No, I'm willing to learn from you so that way I don't have to do that anymore. And you'll learn from me so that way you don't have to do that no more. We're not each other's halves, but this is a different whole. And if I can extract as much as I can from it and I'm doing the same shit to you. Now we're combining the greatest parts of the, both of us. Constantly watering. Constantly watering. So my point is like, people don't water. and it is, It's like they don't maintain that equal value. Mm -mm. Like for me, and it's like, bro's getting a haircut 24-7. He still has to do this. He's dressing up in suits. You have a job where you don't have to dress up like that, right? But it's like, when does he see you dressed up? Mm -hmm. You see that every single time he walks in. Mm-hmm. He's aware of that. He looks in the mirror. He's like, yeah, I look sharp. Mm -hmm. He goes out. Mm -hmm. Let you see that shit. And he comes back home. Mm. Oh, when I got to this point, the type of shorty I'm supposed to have is I, I love you. And this is the part that sucks. It's like the nigga doesn't want to say shit because it's like certain women, their insecurities just automatically internalize that. It's like, I'm Absolutely. not. You, I'm not enough. You don't, you, I'm not enough. It's like, yeah. I'm still here. I didn't go nowhere. But I'm saying it's like you are enough, but you're in, you're not that same person you're, you're, you're here. You have to maintain that shit. And a lot of women, there's no way to drill that into them. No. <laughs> no, because they take it personal. And realistically, you have to think about it like, if your man meets you and he's calling you sexy and beautiful and he, he can't keep his hands off you and, and, you know, he desires you, right? Because that's that's what women really, that's what, man, you know what? Y'all be capping when y'all be saying that. If this isn't for men, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because guess what? Like one of the best feelings in the world when you have a partner is for them to desire you. And not in an obsessive way, not in like, but it just like a, damn, do a little spin for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like, like some of the issue with that too is not only are you not getting dressed up for your man or you're not doing like certain things you used to, but now you're not amping him up. You know, these females are amping him up on the street, but he's coming home and you're taking advantage that he comes home dressed like that every day. You feel me? Like men are, men are simple creatures, ladies. And that's really what it's come down to. And I feel like, you know, you, a lot of women say that, but they don't really know what that means. Like oh. a man... A man is happy with being loved in ways where it's respect. Like, I don't, it's hard to explain, but it's really not. You just got to pay attention. That's really how I came to it. It's not like a man was like, here you go, here's a book to it. But like loyalty and respect really matter. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's where the conversation comes in of how women carry themselves and certain things that they do. You feel me? It mm. really is. Absolutely. Because here's the thing, right? I'll give you a perfect example. There's been situations where I've just been talking to somebody, getting to know them, and they vocalize because I've allowed them to have a safe space with me where they can vocalize and be like, hey, I don't like this, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And I set the precedence, you know? I say that from the beginning, like, yo, you could tell me. I've redirected, and I've taken accountability and I've apologized because I don't deal with, like, bottom of the barrel men. So yeah, absolutely, sorry, baby. You want a sandwich with no crust? I didn't mean to. You know what I'm saying? I know you would take it that way. We're starting off. Now I know something about you. You know what I'm saying? There's certain men that we have talked about, I don't give them enough attention because I'm busy. I work a lot. I move around a lot. You know what I mean? But when you tell me that and you're not acting a certain way, hell yeah, I'm on it. Oh, you want me to call you? Hold on. Yeah, but some women will be like, you're not gonna tell me what you mean. Like, oh, you're being, yeah, yeah, that's girl, like, that's feminine stuff. Why are you over here complaining? And it's like, he's not complaining, it's just he wants you. Now, when that man starts looking the other way, or when that man does get you, but doesn't really act the way he used to because you called him a girl, basically, now you're mad. Now you want him to crave you. Now you want him to desire you and be on your back. But there's a block that you come created. Come on. Come on. You know? I'm saying it's like, if you people focus on triggers, I feel like a lot of shit. There would be so much less resistance because it's like, bro, a lot of people really do not understand mm -hmm. how to solve an issue. It's just acknowledge my emotions. Keep on acknowledging my emotions. I'm still emotional. What are you doing? Keep on acknowledging my emotions. <laughs> and it's like anytime I randomly feel that way, I'm going to bring it up to you as if like, oh, you hurt me instead of just baby. I'm just thinking about this and I just want to be helped. Right. 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 But now it's like, you know, there was a trigger involved. If you're randomly bringing it back up to me, it's like this is and this is what a lot of women don't realize. When you re bring up something a man did to you while you're feeling it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the delivery fucking matters. Absolutely. Right. 
it's one thing if you're like you want to you're feeling emotional that's fine like it's okay i know some men are not the greatest at explaining why you did it wrong and they're thinking you know what you don't know how to do this so the answer is just no I, we already talked about it you're hurt i get it i already said you were good i already no let's be honest bro they are women are emotional creatures you know I, I always give them that and it's like some things are just gonna it's just gonna happen and because you did it you do have to hold yourself accountable mm -hmm. and Ladies, that doesn't mean just shit on a nigga. Or that doesn't mean treat him any way you please whenever it's like certain things are happening, right? And it's like, bro, just introduce the conversation as a way for you to acknowledge the fact that there was also a trigger involved when you were heartbroken. Mm. For me, it's like, baby, I understand the fact that I had a role to play in it, right? Men, mm. at times, we are a little bit defensive because it's like we know when your emotions are brought up in certain, certain situations, we can't win. I told you this. It's just like, if you get too emotional, where can I win? Mm -hmm. Like, you'll do something to me, you're crying about it. <laughs> and now I, I still got to be a shoulder to cry on, right? It's like, I'm hurt, but I'm so sorry. And you're like, oh, come And here. then I was like, come can here. I walk away like you do? Nah, I can't. Come, yeah. on, come here, come here. Let me nurture yeah. you. See, a man is willing to give mm -hmm. you that at times. So the same way when you're, when you don't want, even if you should feel hurt, at least just be like, I don't want you to feel defensive. I don't want you to feel like I'm throwing shit at you. Mm -hmm. I get what I did. But I just need you right now. You know, you know what I always think about because I've seen it with my own eyes and not even just with like, like even on a platonic level. Mm -hmm. um, ladies, think of it this way, right? And I don't know if, if any of you, you know, have seen Hulk or whatever. You did you you know you know right? Like when when his shorty was around, he was a different person. You know what I mean? And he never really got that way with her. And that's why I said earlier, like creating a safe space for a man is important because, you know, and, and I spoke briefly on this yesterday and I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of context, but I've been taking care of my little brother for the past like almost five years and raising a man alone, <laughs> it shows you a lot of things. And, um, you know, even with me creating that safe space for my brother, there's still times where I know he feels like he can't talk. And it's just, because they're just wired differently. You know what I mean? Like all women do is talk. We talk to ourselves. Like, you know what I mean? So if you don't create that space, and it's not, you You aren't on that level of, you know, consciousness with your partner. Like, you guys aren't really becoming one. I don't care how early it is. Like, these are questions and situations that you have to get out right away. But you're never going to get married. You're never going to have a long, like, a long-term relationship. You're never going to actually be happy because this is a whole nother human that at, for most of their life, you weren't around. You get what I'm saying? Like, there's no way that if I'm with someone, I can tell them how to feel. Now, can I tell them that maybe how they feel, like you said, the delivery or like maybe it triggered me. Now I feel like you're belittling me, whatever. Yeah. Of course. But like there's a couple right now on the Internet and I don't know who they are. So, you know, find them, guys. Yeah, really. But they're a black couple. They're beautiful. And, they, you know, they do a lot of like breath work together. They do a lot of tantric. Tantric doesn't always have to be sexual. You know what I mean? And like they hold each other and when they're having arguments and stuff and they feel like one person is getting triggered or whatever, the other person, instead of interrupting them with negativity, they'll be like, I love you. You know what I mean? Like, that's beautiful. Like, I can sense that right now. You're upset with me. Like, can we hug? That matters. Like, that ma in a heated argument, because guess what? If your partner does reject you, don't, again, don't lash out at you. Just try. And it sounds crazy, but guess what, ladies? When you're angry and you are walking away, you... you you turn around if that man don't go after you and you be like, so you ain't gonna come after me? Like you can't do things like that and not expect to not be, give that grace to your person. Woman, male, whatever, like. I think one of the simplest things is like, we're talking about safe space, right? Mm -hmm. This is what a lot of women don't realize, right? Physical touch in terms of the sense of it being nurturing, comforting, and feeling at peace. Cuddling, it's not the same thing. I mm -mm. hope you guys understand that. Mm -mm. When I tell you it's like, <laughs> I know how I focus so well on like, how do I create that space with somebody? And a lot of it was, this is my thing, right? When I see something that's missing out into the world, I say, hey, let me learn this shit. You know, I'm, I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna build it. So it's like, this is missing, let me bring it here. My brother can't do this and it affects him like that way. Yo brother, I'm not gonna end up like you. Let me, I'm gonna add on this part that you don't got. Wait, when I'm this good with emotions, I'm not disciplined. <laughs> it doesn't work that well. Cause I'm not wired to fully tap into my emotions mm -hmm. constantly. I bet we're gonna go to the gym and hardwire that discipline into me a little bit. So the whole idea of like creating a safe space, right? It's like, most men never get that. 
Mm. I don't get it often at all, which is why I tried to be so fucking great at me being the emotional support that I could provide to my partners. And this is the thing. Once you start getting so great at it and you understand just the little things that need to be done when they need to be done for that to be there, anytime you don't get it, you can't ignore that shit. <laughs> That's why our foresight is like it's a gift, but it really is a curse sometimes. When you can see everything, it's like, but it's sweet, what but the it's sweet. fuck, bro? It's <laughs> like, I don't want to see this right now, but you're going to make me see it. And what I'm saying is like for most men, we don't get that at all. And what I'm saying is like, you can sit there and talk to major- a lot of shorties. It's like your man might have cried in front of you, right? I get that. But I'm pretty sure if your man has ever cried in front of you, you felt the fact that it's like this little hugging thing. It's like it was a little hard to kind of like do that with certain men. And it's like just the idea of be- being held, that's something most men don't experience. When they're mm-hmm. going through some shit, you're like mm-hmm. you see him dealing with some shit, mm-hmm. you're okay. Not just like, you're okay, baby, but just mm-hmm. you're like, come here, baby, come here, let me hold you. Talk to me. But see, what's bothering you? That kind of goes back to the whole like women take take things personal because for me, I learned that early on, right? Because society they kind of tell you like yeah. from the beginning like what what is gonna be how men act, how they behave, and after you're in certain relationships, you see how men move when it comes to their emotions and like there's you need to first of all, and we had this conversation yesterday about everything has to be individual, but like you have to know your man, right? First and foremost, some men are willing some women have never had that if you have a man that's not really physical touch because he's never had it it doesn't mean that he doesn't want it there's different ways like instead of being like what's wrong you can't talk to me Da-da-da. trying to hold him and do all this extra stuff like be like baby you want a massage you know what i'm saying like do you want me to rub your head like how's your feet like if your man has a long ass job like i can't stand women that are like oh ew that's gross that's your man like that's your man like what do you mean you. it's gross you let feel me, me? Cook for you. get on 2k yeah, baby get me. on 2k yeah like even that too i've heard so many women say things like that like when me and my brother lost our mom, that was my brother's piece a lot of the times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't care if he's not going through something detrimental. He's tired, like mentally exhausted. He's done mad stuff all day. And I get it. You want his time, but like make him want your time, too. Because if he comes through the house and the first thing you do is like, oh, take out the trash, do this, do that. Like, I get it. You want these things done. But like, he want to talk to you. Come man. on. Like, yeah, he doesn't want to talk to you because the first thing you did was ask something of him. Everybody all day has been asking something of him. Everybody all day has been like, hey, 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 especially if he's a boss, because most of y'all want a boss. Like if he's a boss, he got four million things to worry about, sending emails, talking to all these people, and you can't rub this man's feet. That's wicked. You know what's crazy? Crazy. That's that wicked. exact thing was all there's this thing like a study on brain activity. I watched a TED talk and they randomly mentioned this, right? Um, they're trying to realize it's like, how do men calm down? How do women calm down? And they kind of like Typical things. Let's talk. Does that help you calm down? Mm. And then there's, okay, let me let you sit down. Does that help you calm mm. down? They kind of put men and women in both of those situations. And mm. then they were at, like literally monitoring like their brain activity. Not just how relaxed started, but truly like right. the, my brain feels chemical calm. Yeah, the like waves. this is true. It's not about they feel like this is just the state that they become in. Woman, <laughs> this is the funny shit. <laughs> when you sit down without talking. <laughs> Your brain activity skyrockets. It's like uncomfortable. You're like, <laughs> what's wrong with him? He hates me. Like, it's the, like this. Like this isn't even about like partners. None of that. No, we're talking about just a woman being told, <laughs> sit quiet, quiet, and Siéntate. be quiet. You're not doing nothing. You're just sitting. Their brain activity skyrockets compared to men that. when they're told to sit. I believe that it drops, and then when they're told to talk. Mm-mm. It doesn't work. Yeah. For a woman, when you start talking, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Relieve it or mm-hmm. not, their brain activity Releases, goes down because yeah. you're more in control. And now it's coming mm-hmm. out. It's like, Absolutely. smooth. But this is the thing. It's like, for us, it's like, know your man. Most women are still at the basis of not understanding the fact that we are actually wired differently. Most women don't know how to love men. Because they don't they don't <laughs> want to accept we're wired differently. Like, it's yeah. not like, oh, no, so but this. this is how it should be. No, bro. Literally, my brain, how I function as a man, we're not... I know certain things may get sensitive, but it's like if we're looking back in the past in terms of like early things, like there is things that have been categorized as this is the man brain. This is how it functions. And it is different from a woman's brain. Like Absolutely. I said, when it was first classified in terms of does that hold up today? I don't know. And that is none of my business. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. No. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I get what you're saying because it's absolutely true. You know, we see it early on, you know, cognitively with kids like and personally, I agree. I feel like your girls is kind of an energized bunny anyway. But like if I do have to get told, sit down and be quiet, like I'm like, 
You're thinking Dios mío, that. yeah, like, and sometimes it's not even like bad thoughts or anything like that. It's just like I want to do something. I want to like knit. I don't even fucking knit. I don't even knit. I want to <laughs> knit. Like I want to build Legos and shit. And it's like you know, it's, it. But I, you always notice like a man and they spread their legs and they lean back and they get all life. like cozy. You know, like living the life. So it's it's. I think one of the the best things that I get when I when people come to my house and it's not just you know again it could be platonic it could be family it could be whatever it's like your house is so cozy it's so comfy you know what I mean like I don't have shoes in my house like I'm constantly making sure you know I have greenery in my house like everything like you want to balance yourself with everything else so that you get balance from everything else because a lot of you have succumbed to this new age thinking of manifestation right and law of attraction now that is tr it's real it's real but here's the thing. <laughs> You're not here's a, peace. You're not no, no, no. Peace. It, it's real. <laughs> but when you sit here and you're genuinely not realizing that everything has that back and forth and you you're really delusional about the fact that, oh, I'm only going to get this because that's just who they are and what it is like. My first apartment, let me tell you, baby, it was a rundown. Like my sister called it the trap house. You know what I'm saying? Like, was it really? I don't know what they was doing down there. I was on the second floor, minding my business. But when I went in there, you know, I was a little baby. I just left my house, like first went to college. And I was like, wow. And everybody went in there and they were like, no, like this. I think there's mold in here. I'm like, there's not like, cause I really checked it out. But like, I was paying $500 a month. And then he wanted first last security. I ain't had that. And I was like, listen, how about I fix up this place because this is a dump and you take all that off. And I just pay you first month. I move in next month. So give me these next two weeks. Man, when I tell you I painted every room, I'm people went into that house and were shocked. Damn. You feel me? I don't Same live there now. You know what I'm saying? But it's all in what you see. I could have went in there and been like, hell no, I'm not living in here, blah, blah. My house had no roaches, no ants, no nothing. It was, it was just, it was a little lopsided, really? you know what I mean? It was, but it was mine, you know? So same thing with your partner. They're not going to come perfect. And it's, you know, I always think of it this way. Before my mom passed away, I was a different person, right? I've become a better version of myself through that loss. But if I would have been with a partner and they never experienced that transition, that would have been hard for them. So if you get with somebody and you guys get married and all that, and he has both his parents, good luck to you if you don't know how to handle somebody going through darkness or not being their best selves. It just happens. You know what I mean? Most women aren't prepared. You know, I'll be very honest, and I think you can attest to this, right? This is the thing about learning and why some women probably stray away from it. Or it, let's not even say women. Why certain people stray away from it in general? Like the idea of like the mental, like not even the mental block, but the blockage that's there from like, bro, just learn him a little bit more. My thing is I'm the type of person where it's just like, I overdo it. I'm not saying this is something you should do, but I'm saying it's like the fact that I know I can do this. It makes no sense why people can't do the bare minimum to get to that point. I will search up that person's psychology. In other words, I'm searching up the things that you don't understand about yourself. Cause for me, I'm, I don't hop in a relationship expecting to be perfect. And I also understand the fact that because of who I am, the things that I'm capable of seeing, I have to be the person that brings light to certain things for you. Mm. And if I'm bringing light to certain things, that means I'm going to have to be very fucking patient because mm. I just showed you this. And now all of a sudden I'm telling you, stop doing this shit. Stop doing this shit. <laughs> oh, bro. It's like I help. Her. I know my process of figuring things out. OK, so these are the type of triggers I've noticed when you kind of like start doing that. And I know you love me and I know you don't want to do that, but that is still what happens. And we do have to deal with that. When you, imagine introducing that to a person. And like when I said searching for somebody's psychology, I'm talking like, that was one next one. I say like there were certain times getting through to her was just impossible. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I bet. Mm -hmm. I know the type of relationship you have with your dad. I know the type of relationship you have with your mother. I know how old you currently are. I will search up your psychology. Like the parenting. I know your parenting styles. I'm searching that up. So, oh, you are the only child. He's Let me see how that affects the only child. If I can do that much, the idea that you can't sit there and just fucking ask is ridiculous. But this is my point, right? When you're learning about somebody, you're told of all the triggers that affect that type of person. Which means at times you have to look at yourself like, oh shit, I might not be the greatest person. I might be a shitty person. Trust me. When you're learning, this person is like this because of that. There's no way. They don't just, this is the thing about psychology. It doesn't just put the information out there for you. Nah. It tells you all the little loops that exist and how that that thing can be affected, how it can be magnified, or how it can be solved. And a lot of people is like, you don't care enough about your partner getting better. You just care about this person maintaining their best. It's you. the idea of them. 
Most people, people want because an you idea. love them, you have to give them everything. Or you have to be at your utmost and like other things in life don't matter. Right, right. Or they have to receive everything and, and you know, that's why I don't like the whole like 50-50 thing. That's bullshit. It's a hundred, a hundred over here, baby. Because guess what? You're not always going to have a hundred. And I'm not always going to have a hundred. But if we both come in shooting for that, we're always going to have a hundred together. You know what I mean? But if we come in 50-50, baby, that's why most of y'all already feel empty. You feel like, damn, my partner's not doing enough is because, well, 50 isn't a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, 50% isn't a lot to be expected. And I feel like it's not even an expectation, right? But, like, personally, if I was with somebody and certain things were happening in my life, like, let's let's put the baby aside because I feel like sometimes people get sensitive about that topic. So let's just say you gained weight in general, right? I want my man to tell me. I want my man to tell me. Now, I don't want you to look at me and be like, oh, you, you disgust me or, like, you call me on my name or anything like that. But, like, Motor, like you know, if if you feel like I'm slacking in that department, like I I need you to to do that for me because now I'm gonna be like you know what he loves me because it's not even just about looking good or him desiring me right now we take it a step further we want a future together he don't want me to die because I have high cholesterol or diabetes or because I can't walk up a flight of stairs I made a status about this the other day and I know it's a sensitive topic but we have to be realistic right. It's okay to be positive about where you're at right now because I say that at any point you could be super small, super petite, in the middle, big, whatever, in between. Be happy that you're in this moment. Appreciate yourself in this moment, but always want better. Always want better because even me right now, I consider myself a pretty fit person. I'm actually like, what, like 60 hours into my fast right now? Like I'm going to hit 72 hours at midnight tonight and I'm not going to eat till tomorrow morning because I'm doing this the right way to cleanse my body. But that still doesn't mean that I can't work on stuff like that because you could still lose your stamina. You could still lose, like, you know, actually being good. So I don't know. Personally, I would think if somebody let me go down, let the ship go down when it comes to me individually, they don't really care about me. Me too. And I think, like, the biggest thing is it's, like, people aren't ready to offer help. And I think this is a whole thing where it's, like, the whole – when I we kind of went to, like, the 80, I, the 80, 20 and stuff like that. When I brought it up earlier, it's, like – you coming into a relationship as a whole, right? And then both of us are pouring into this little thing. You know, let's just say it it just somehow it doubles up and we both fill it up, right? With mm-hmm. our whole selves. We filled that thing up. Now at certain points, you're not able to give all of that. We have to understand how to manage this. Mm-hmm. Which means in moments where let's just say we're aiming for a hundred, right? But it's not fifty fifty. It's just the fact that it's like at times we just need to get to that point. Or even if you want to look at things as 50-50, understand the fact that, right? Okay, it's 50-50. You guys, you're whole, but we're just saying 50-50, we add up to 100. At a certain point, I I, I can't give you that. I am I just lost my job. I am depressed. Um, my when Somebody in my family just went to the hospital. I, I can't. Mm-hmm. And now I'm at 20. Yeah. And I am the person that can easily maintain, fit, maintain that 100 all the time. And you're telling me you don't know how to pick up and just give me 80 for for a little bit. A little bit. Because when you drop, guess what I'm going to be ready yeah. to do? I got you. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's the idea because you don't. You so don't it, want that work for You real. don't. <laughs> like, you know when people say the whole like, oh, well, what do you bring to the table? I don't like that either. Like man or woman because are you prepared for whatever the hell you bring it? Are you really prepared to use it? Right? You're going to tell me I'm going to be your support system. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then like you said, I lose my job. Now all of a sudden I'm a bum bitch. Like a bum bitch though? Like why you know what i mean and that's really how it happens like people will lose their attraction and lose their love when that person loses their assets or their you know what they can provide because even you know i remember i I, like looked at my friend one day and i asked her like i knew that she shouldn't have been in that relationship right but it's not my place to say that i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you analyze it so i'm giving her questions and i'm like oh you really think that's your person type thing and she sat there quiet i already knew it was a no (laughs) you too quiet but then she was like, you know, I think, and I interrupted her, and I was like, if that man lost his legs right now. Are you staying? Are you staying? Probably not. That car, I swear you could drop a pin in that car and you could hear it. Because that's love. Because that's a choice. You feel me? Like, that's a hard choice, right? Like, Stay with you. Right, because now I know, now I know that the older you get, I have to literally be your caretaker. You get what I'm saying? You can't do certain things. And I'm not saying you can't be independent and things like that as somebody who's like that, but it is a sacrifice to ask of someone. You know what I mean? But when it's love, you don't care. (laughs) You don't. You really don't. When it's it's a, 
when it's a choice of being like you know what like you said this person does everything else though like they can provide everything else like at a snap i'm not leaving that i'm sorry like a lot of girls like even the whole boring thing like baby fuck it I think it's green on the other side. We both boy together. I think it's green on the other side. Instead of it's where you not. Water. Instead of it's water. Instead of where you what water. What I tell you. Instead you know what? You one day, I think I think me and you going to have to do a part two to this. Because one thing that I, I that I don't ever hear women talking about, boy, water is hell. Pants. Okay, so ladies, you guys know. You know. We've all dropped the ball. At least once. I know me personally, it was one time for a for one. Like, shout out to my ex if he's listening. Um, <laughs> you feel me? But <laughs> he was an amazing man. Amazing man. And, you know, I am very happy for him for where he is in his life. He has a baby now. He has a girl. You know what I mean? And I think it's very beautiful, you know, because I'm not taking credit, but I feel like anytime you're in a relationship with somebody, you contribute to them, Better. their long-term partner. You know what I mean? So, and, uh... He was a little older than me, and I was just super young. I was super young, and, it, you know, when you have no freedom growing up in the sense of, like, you know, I grew up in a Puerto Rican strict household, so, like, I didn't get to sleep out till I was, like, 17, 18, you know what I mean? Like, when you finally get freedom, you have a car, you're making your own money, you're doing all this and that, then you get into a relationship, it's like, but I want to go to the club. Like, i never been to the club. Like, I'm old enough now, you know, things like that, and it was... It was something that looking back, I don't regret it because, like I said, I'm glad that, you know, he had a baby. I'm not incubating for nobody right now. Um, so I'm glad, you know, that he's where he's at. I think he's probably an amazing father. But I dropped that ball, like, in the sense of I wasn't honest with him about it. Like, you have to, if you're not ready or you feel like you're holding back from the person and they're giving you all this love and all this abundance, like, you have to tell them where you're at mentally because I think if I would have told him, we would have probably like just reeled back a little bit and probably still, you know what I mean? Cause it was three and a half years. So it's not like it was a short relationship, but mm -hmm. it taught me that you go through those lows in relationships where there's nothing bad going on. But to me, I felt like relationships had to be this exciting thing. And it's like, no, the excitement comes from really, really learning your partner and like, now, if I got somebody I really like and I see a little twinkle because they're telling me something that excites them or like I'm over here giddy for them, you know, it makes me feel good to see my man look a certain way or like act a certain way because of his own happiness. And I have to separate that from myself. And like I said, women a lot of times take things personal and they feel like, well, if he's not happy, I have to make him happy. That's not your responsibility. Right. But you make the environment where he could figure out what his happiness is, where is he? You know what I'm saying? So I learned that. That's why I'm I'm grateful for all my exes. But he was the best one. You know what I mean? So far, he really was. Like, because that man, like, he just, like, we keep talking about common theme. He knew me. Yeah. So if I got a little spicy, he knew exactly what to say or so what to do. Where I'm like. He learned you. It's like, damn, you have did. to shut the fuck up. He it's like, the, this the, nigga knows what I'm doing what? as I'm doing it. When I tell you I will shut the fuck up. Like, callaita. Like, and that's not something that, like, really people can do. Because if I got something to say, I usually just say it. But then you realize, like, that back and forth, you know, I could probably count on my hands how many times we argued in those three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Like, because it was if there was any, like, back and forth, you talk about it. But a lot of women, they see dudes like that. Nowadays, people call it a simp or people call it a man who, you know what? But having a man who literally worships the ground you walk on is rare. You feel me? Even fuck. rare. Like, even if you marry this man, whatever, you won't always get that praise. But if that's something you want, you have to carry yourself a certain way. You feel me? So, like, again, no shade, but you can't say these things and want to be praised by a high-value man and then be out doing reckless stuff all weekend. You know what I'm saying? And then on Monday, go to, like, this hotel trying to go sit at the bar and look cute. Like, you could smell it on you, sis. You still smell like cognac. Like, you have to... You have to mold yourself, right? Don't let society or anybody else mold you. But, like, what what kind of woman do you really want to be? Like, what kind of woman do you want your daughter to be? Like, someone asked me the other day, like, would you be mad if your daughter was prettier than you? I'm like, hell no, I hope so. I'm crossing my fingers for that. I want her to be the most gorgeous thing I've ever laid my eyes on because I want to prep her for this world. But if I behave a certain way, it's not to say that my daughter's going to behave a certain way, but, like, I, w I just, I can't fathom that I might potentially pass something on to her if I don't get it together now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I want to teach her, like, love through her, me and her dad. 
again, no shade to all the stepdaddies out there. Y'all are amazing, but like, I don't want that. I don't want a broken home. I don't want no stepdaddy running around in his boxes thinking that he owned the place. Like, that would <laughs> ma really make me feel some type of way. I really would be like, if you don't get that, matter of fact, leave. Like, <laughs> you know, so I think with women, accountability. Big one. I think apologies, <laughs> men deserve apologies, you know, like when you're wrong, you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to keep this man long term, it's important for you to say that because a lot of times men, women are more prone to leaving a relationship than men, right? And when a man doesn't leave, he's kind of stacking that in his sleeve. Like not that he's trying to use it against you, but he's just like, you know what? This, one, this time didn't piss me off that much, but I didn't like it. But he doesn't want to argue. Again, like men crave peace. They just want to be chill. Like, So they leave it, they leave it, they leave it. But then you never apologize at all. You never do anything to like, eventually he's going to get sick of you. And that shorty that like asks him if he's good at work, she going to get the ring. And she going to get it in less time than you. And you going to be tight. You going to be tight. It's like women just get stuck at, it's like, I think it's like this new age of feminism, which I don't think is no longer the movement of feminism <laughs> um but it's like this idea where it's like a man can't tell you what to do you're right but a man wouldn't need to tell you what to do if you understood how to be desirable by men it's like a lot of the times you do shit where it's kind of like how the fuck do you think i'm gonna like this so the man tells you what to do it's like not that he approaches it the right way or man should go about it that way but to most men it's like huh I, I'm providing, I'm, I'm offering myself and who I become for this. No, no, no. That's mm -hmm. not what I thought this was going to go like. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, this is what I desired. I thought you understood that. Mm -hmm. Why would I stack myself up to this point? And then I want a woman that's doing that. I could have gotten the woman that was doing that two years. If we even if we take two years off my progression, I can find a woman that does all the exact same shit as you. And I get it. This doesn't mean you're that type of person, but. Um, all of you guys are wearing sheet clothing. You know, you feel me? It's like it's hard to tell one from the other. And this is what we said about men wanting respect. A lot of the times, if respect is not there, we don't feel loved. Because the big part isn't it's about, oh, I want to do this. I get it. You should want to do whatever the fuck you want to. But guess what? Mm -hmm. There should be a part of you that says, how does this make my man feel? How does, like, how am I representing? I, like, this is the thing. Right? If you want a future, eventually, y'all are going to combine y'all the names. You feel me? Listen, I'm not saying you pick up the name that I, but. One family. In general, right. And now both of you guys are representation of that. Mm -hmm. Now, anytime something happens, guess what? You're at the club shaking ass. Um, and guess what, bro? It's like, random this boy's like, Yo, you know, sure it was like, I'm talking about like the same shit we, we, we said we was not fucking with no more, which is why we don't go to the club. It's ass right. shaking with our friends. And I'm like, there was no niggas. I ain't going to hold you, but niggas are staying. Still, <laughs> so, right, still. Hey. And you know how many guys will pull out their phone while you're doing that and now and they have is, that in their phone? One of my exes didn't even understand this concept. The idea of a shot being poured in your mouth. Okay, let, hold on, hold on. This is a great this is a great one. Let me not make it sound like she's bad. She is an amazing No, but woman. that's spicy but though. That's my point. That's still this is the thing, right? It has nothing. She's an we're not amazing categorizing shorty, her. Even, right, we're not even categorizing. then it's like that part was something where it's like, you should think it's Bro, obvious. It's what it represents. I wouldn't eat a banana on my Snapchat. You get what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit there and peel the banana and be like, because eh, I know what it represents and I know how people feel about it. So when you got your mouth all open and he can see the little dangly thing in the back of your throat, what you think he's thinking about? He ain't thinking about yeah, like, oh, let me make sure I don't <laughs> dribble this on her lip. He wants to dribble it all over you. Come on. Like, no, this, listen, I'm going to tell you like this. Y'all going to be mad at me. I'm sorry. Most of, this, most of these things are conversations we have at brunch. They know. Women know. Women know. The thing is that it's more comfortable to be in the innocence, to be in the, I didn't Play know. Play the victim. Yeah, ah, the, the I didn't know. Mindset. I didn't uh. think that. But let me tell you, take that same little innocent, I didn't know, and now have her man pouring a shot, in, a shot into multiple girls' mouths, she gonna know better. She gonna be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. come on. So it's the same difference. Like, me personally, I don't do nothing to my man, nor do I go out and act any kind of way that I wouldn't do him or done to me. You know what I'm saying? Because if I go on Snap and I see something wreck, I'm popping up. I'm just kidding. I'm not popping up. <laughs> Future husband, don't be scared of me. <laughs> don't be scared of me, boo. <laughs> Come here. Um, no, but really though, like, I'm gonna feel some type of way, or I'm gonna walk away from the relationship, or something's gonna happen where like yeah. it didn't have to be that if you just didn't act that way. So it's like, as women, personally, when you get in a relationship, you give things up. I won't put that out there, but go ahead. 
Right, right. And that's my <laughs> point. I was going to say, like, I felt like women ask men to give up more than what men ask women to give up. I'm just being real. And like, that's why I said, y'all ain't going to like what I have to say. <laughs> but it's real shit because, listen, at the end of the day, they're not allowed to tell you how to dress. They're not allowed to tell you if you can have guy friends or not. They're not allowed to tell you where to go and who to go with. They're not allowed to tell you that they don't want you around your single friends no more because you're taken and they flocking their feathers. They can't say certain things, but you can. You could be like, hop off 2K. You could be like, I don't want you going out with your boys this weekend. You could be like, don't wear those gray sweatpants. You could, you could say all these things. And it's just like, well, I know women. And he knows men. Like, men take ladies plot you feel me so it's like yes of course when you see a woman we know we can smell when somebody is attracted to our man we know when a girl has ulterior motives but in the same breath so doesn't a man so much so that he can see that your bro has been he been sitting Dying there to get that green light waiting. he waiting for the right day where you just a little too drunk and you need a hug that's what he waiting for ladies and i'll tell you you know why <sighs> Put this on blast a little bit, but uh, let me put it this way. Let me make it general. I've had a couple of people that I've been close to end up like saying something later. Like, oh yeah, like I actually feel this way for you. And I'm like, oh, what oh, the what hell? Like, yeah, like <laughs> I thought we was really friends. So so ladies, no, men aren't your friends. Like, and I learned that early on. And I had the same little arguments that y'all have with y'all boyfriends. Like, yeah, you mean? No, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you throw it, he gonna catch it. I'm telling you. So if you don't want your man on a yacht with a bunch of girls and a thong, and they're shaking that ass on, their ass on him and he's pouring champagne on them, I don't think you should be doing it either with your girls. I don't care if it's a Miami trip or whatever you're doing. If you got a man, go on a Miami trip with your man. Like, go to the club with your man. Like, especially because guess what? If you're calling your man at three in the morning from Miami and he's wherever you're at, and like where y'all normally are at, and you're getting like essayed, you feel me? Or somebody's doing something and you're with a bunch of girls who can't do nothing to defend you, what is he going to do? Like, he what? He feel like shit for it. Huh? I'm saying like, nah, he has to feel like shit for it. You feel me? Yeah. Or or what if it's really a dangerous situation and you get hurt? Like, you got to think about your, like, me personally. Like, I'm, I'm old-fashioned when it comes to dating because I love the fact that a man is a provider and a protector. So, like, there's certain things, like, I'm not like, oh, yeah, open the door because I'm the shit. No, I'm like, open the door, baby, so you can watch the surroundings. Like, what the hell? Like, walk around and please check, check around. So, certain women... They want that, but they won't, you know what I mean? Do the other side. So again, this isn't even a shot at y'all. This is just to really let it be known because what I'm feeling some type of way about is that the kids now in this generation are growing up. These girls are growing up thinking that a man has to jump through these hoops and give them money and do all this stuff. That's not, that's not going to lead them anywhere good. And a lot of these girls are romanticizing this lifestyle of like, adult lifestyle, if you catch my drift, you know what I mean? Yeah. And this is no shade once again to nobody out there, but... As a woman, regardless of what you do for a career, you should want the best for the next generation. So if you know that you started stripping because you needed money or whatever the case was, you need to tell this little girl, like, yo, save your bread from now. <laughs> so you don't got to be in my position. No? like, so I, Don't feel ashamed if you strip. I stripped before. Don't feel ashamed. It's not about a shame, right? But it's just like your child. Don't you want your child to be better than you? So, like, I just don't like the promotion of... Anything that isn't about our better health. You feel me? And if that is the case and you want to promote that, promote it intelligently to these girls. Be like, hey, instead of being the stripper, get a strip club. <laughs> like, come on. Let's let's educate these babies. Because one day we're not going to be here. One day we're not going to be here. And guess what? Like, these babies are going to be lost in the sauce. You're talking about babies? People, <laughs> a lot of people don't think that far. About, like, the See, idea of, like, the next gen generation? like, making this okay makes it so not okay for the next generation that ad adopts it way too fucking early. And that's introduced to that reality at an age where it's like, they're supposed to be protected from it. But because you're pushing for it to be generalized because you want acceptance, now they have no, parents have no way of hiding their kids from that. Like, I, I told you when we were about yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. But it's just like, when, you, when, you, when certain narratives are pushed so fucking hard, you can't keep kids away from it. Yeah. And I'm not speaking on any types of narratives, but it's just like. Just in general, it could be as simple like, as a TV bro, show. Like, oh no, just the idea is like, bro, the amount of shit that's just sexualized. There's nothing wrong with the fact that you should be allowed to do this. You should want this. Or it's like the idea is like the IG model. Like every single short is trying to replicate a fucking look. And this is the thing. It is the easiest fucking thing for niggas to see it. We do not look at you and think you are that. But we say. You're allowing me to experience that because you really think you're that. Fuck it. I'll experience it. But the idea of, like, your worth is really that. 
No. And this is the thing we I even mentioned to you. It's like most women would be mad if I told them that their worth <laughs> is dependent on these same dudes that they call ain't shit. Because this is the thing, right? Oh, you haven't came across a high value man yet, right? Ah, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who tells you're a bad bitch? <laughs> <laughs> who, who tells you your smile is pretty? Pause it. Pause it. Walk I, away from the phone like, right now. <laughs> who tells you? I would do anything for you. I would marry you tomorrow. Who double tapping in pictures, girl? It ain't nobody you want because you haven't gotten that motherfucker yet. <laughs> if you have seen him. Wait, oh, you noticed him and you didn't know what to do because you don't know how to be desirable by men. A high value man actually doesn't want to spend his time with you. And this is the part that gets you sick. He actually will talk to you. He will fuck you. And you will start thinking some shit's happening. He's like, no. When did I say that? <laughs> Why are you being me weird to me? You can't go to the club and you think I'm going to be with you? Nah, if I can't speak, bro, what? The idea that I'm giving so much and I'm not expecting a lot in return, but that doesn't give me power this is ladies you have to understand a man this is the I, this is something that is just given to us i get a high paying job things come from it i become i get i move up a position people are underneath me i just got promoted you underneath me you work for me power i become the boss now i'm the ceo i'm the cfo if i'm the cfo who who in the finance department can tell me something i run shit but see, I acquired this. I gained this level of power. I acquired all this shit. I'm giving it to you. I have no power. Fuck no. Because the same way y'all be like, and this is the thing, woman, ladies, ladies, um, I hate to say this. You are no longer the prize. Oh, you're not that missing gem nobody can find. Because y'all sit here and you say women are amazing all around. See, this is the thing. I'm not going to contest what you say. I will go with it. Women all over the place are amazing <laughs> just because they're women. <laughs> y'all say a lot of men are ain't shit so hold on hold on a woman everywhere are good i okay that's, that's looking good for men that all men are nothing damn ladies you can't find a good man and good woman everywhere so what do you think that good man <laughs> has just available to him he has that shorty that is everything that you are but guess what she won't talk back to him you know, it, and she understands how to communicate. Don't be disrespectful. That's there, but she don't talk back. <gasps> you think he wants? Fuck no! What? Go ahead, go ahead. I just want to say something. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> well, because <sighs> so I actually have a video about this, and it's so funny because mm -hmm. I it was directed towards men, where I was like, uh, "Why are you letting these girls fool you into saying that they're the prize?" Um, because to be honest with you. And I know there's a lot of influencers out here that that's what they're broadcasting. Like, oh, high value women, we're the prize, blah, blah. When you really are a high value woman, you don't talk about it. That's like walking around and me being like, I'm so real, I'm so real, I'm so real. It's like, are you really? I feel like yeah. you're probably one of the fakest people I know then. Because why you have to say it? it? Just be. Yeah, but just be. So for you to be advertising, it's a false advertisement. Because what it is, is that you don't even believe it. Right. So it's one of those things where you're trying to convince yourself. So you say it so much to yourself and you say so much to everybody around you that eventually you're like, wait, no, I am I the am prize. This. Yeah, I am this. And then you're acting a certain way, because let me tell you, the men that I've come across that are high value men, they have valued me for the simple fact that I come as myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong. Your girl got a little bit of makeup because it's cameras and lights and shit. But in general, like, no. And I. You know what I'm saying? Like, and again, I've done it. I've done those things. But the more that I learn, I go on these dates or I meet these people or even networking. And I've these men will tell you, ladies, but y'all can't hear it. If a man tells me, damn, you're so gorgeous. I wish you didn't wear those nails. You have such pretty hands. <laughs> as soon as I get home. What? A man making six figures looked at me today and told me I was beautiful. And that was probably one of the reasons why we didn't get together. Because guess what? They don't have time to sit here and be like, oh, well, I'll figure this out. No. They're, like It's just it's how you present yourself, how you come across. I don't know. That's my thing. I feel like in a healthy relationship, I want my man to lead. I'm done. I've Like I said earlier, I've taken care of my brother for the past four or five years. I've had to do it on my own. I've gotten a taste of what it would be like to be a single mom or just like what it's like to be responsible for everything by yourself. That's just not fun. I was at the group meeting where they said, women want to be independent. Keep me at home. I want to bake pies and shit. I want to teach my kids how to do their ABCs, one, two, threes, and, you know, the laws and shit. Like, I don't, I, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, you know what I do for my craft and everything. I still want to do that. But I don't, I don't want to be out in the streets. I don't want to have a man that I got to compete with because I feel like I want to be a man. I don't, 
I don't want to talk to him a certain way. I don't want to belittle him. Like, I think that's so corny. Like, I really feel like as a woman, if you can't put the robe in the bathroom for your man, prepare like a meal for him, like whatever, and you can't enjoy that too, and you feel like a slave, then you shouldn't be with that man. You don't really love him. Can I do that for my brother right now? That man don't go for nothing. I cook, if I cook for my brother, I bring him the plate to his room. You get what I'm saying? Like, come on. If I'm doing that for my brother, I can't do that for a man who, like, I want to find. Even if it's not about money, right? It's just like, I want this man to hold me when I need him. I, I want him to support me. I want him to tend to me, to praise me. Like, it's, it's just, it's super simple. It really, I'm sorry, ladies. It's so simple. Like I said, that girl, Luli, follow me for more. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's like the part we can end off is just like you just have to learn what that person needs. Mm-hmm. And I think the biggest part of that is like even something as simple as love languages. You can be with so many people and I'll ask them, what was their love language? Because we'll be talking about like certain things they were attempting to do, right? It's like I was trying this. I was like, okay, I get that. That would have worked for a lot of shorties. Like generally, I'm not. this is a great thing that you're capable of doing. But it's like, what's her love language? Mm. It's not words of affirmation. So the fact that you sat here and poured your heart out, it didn't necessarily make her feel loved. Because she doesn't receive that as love, she may think of it as something else. He's trying to bullshit me or something. Mm. What if her thing is like acts of service? Mm. Now, instead of wasting an hour or wasting two, three hours writing a beautiful poem, you simply just told her, hey, I'm pulling up. I know you're off today. Okay, you pick her up. You get her nails in. You know she's been wanting a new hairdo. You get that for them for her. You know her charger broke or if she complains about her charger being too far. You get her a 10-foot charger. You take her to the movies. You know you know it's her favorite food to eat. or And then her favorite snack was also brought on the drive the moment she's there. She walks through the door. There's flowers on the, on the seat. See, it's like both of those things are beautiful. This is my thing. It's like there is a woman out there that I will prefer a poem over all of that extra shit. A hundred fucking percent. I'm the nigga that I would prefer that. It's re- it's ridiculous, but I my thing is words of affirmation. That means so much more to me. Learn how to be desirable by the person that you're with. You can't say it's like, I need you to be this. I need you to be that. But you're not giving them anything to be that. Mm-hmm. Like most men are capable of doing things. And most women, it's like, you don't realize, it's like, like you said, it's, it is tendencies. Just because I did something doesn't mean he is that type of person. But a lot of times you guys play a role that you are incapable of accepting. Mm-hmm. And the idea of building mm-hmm. on your person. This isn't even directed to a woman or anything like it that. It isn't, yeah. Water the person that you're with and understand how to make them better. Mm-hmm. While you're trying to make somebody better, you will see parts of them that are ugly as shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to me, <laughs> I think when it comes to love, that's the beauty of it. When you see that part of them that is so ugly and you're like, I actually really don't like it, but I love everything else and I know this can change. Let's fix it. Let's work mm-hmm. on it. Now that person that's amazing that had this one thing holding them back, you allowed them to become a better person. And now you are you understand how it felt to love that person that had something missing and how it feels to have that person where you helped invest that thing that was missing. And that's deep. I may be an old soul, but stories like that and the, the dynamic of love like that where it's like you guys depend on each other, but it's it makes sense. I do this, you do this. We support each other as a balance. I say this all the time. Dynamics matter. This is a lot of... A lot of women can say, I'm going to be this, and I want my man to also be this. But that's only because you don't have a family yet. And you're not thinking of, wait, if I'm earning this much and he's earning this much, who's home with the kids? Right? You're, you're, you, get, you don't have to accept the reality that the future is going to bring you. You're here in the moment. You're just going to talk your shit, whatever makes the most sense. And this is me referring to men as well. You can't be a nigga that's like, oh, I'm trying to, you can't be a guy that's like, I'm trying to make 300K. Like in my first three years working. You want your shorty to be making out at least 150 within her first two, three years as well. It's like, but then you also want a family early. Wait, what happens to that early family? Both of us are very dedicated to our careers. You want her to pull nine months away randomly mm-hmm. in a career that's that useful to her? That's a little unselfish, mm-hmm. see? When you don't worry about the dynamic and what's needed from the both of you guys to get to where you want to go mm-hmm. or how to build, then it's then it does go back to the whole beating a dead horse because mm-hmm. you're not leading it in the right direction. Now it's like we're working on this shit, but we're not progressing. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. You can work on something and not progress. I can sit here and work on this chair. And if I don't know what the next thing to do is, I will be stuck just Mm -hmm. moving random shit around. Absolutely. Having direction matters. And you find a direction by learning them. Mm -hmm. 
find that blueprint, even if you have to create it yourself and they never understood it. Do it together. But that's my take on that. You can end it off on your last, like, last little take advice type thing. Yeah, um, I, I would, I would love to, you know, add this little thing in here because I think, I think for me too, a big one is um, before any of this, like, before you get into these relationships, before you even try to figure out heal all that stuff, like, really, really understand what you're getting yourself into because. If you're not willing to compromise, and I'm I'm not just talking about compromise of sacrifice, right? But like compromise with like what you even thought it was supposed to be, right? Like letting go, completely letting go, letting it develop properly. Like if you're not willing to take those steps, like especially if you don't know what you want a partner for, you know, some people just want a warm body. Like before you do any of that, really look back to all that. Cause hearts are involved, feelings are involved you know, you're either going to contribute to this person being better or you could contribute to them being worse. So you really got to weigh out your options when it comes down to having these, you know, little situationships. Um, And I would really highly recommend that anybody out there who's single right now, take a hiatus from having sex, especially with random people. You feel me? Like if you're having sex with somebody that you feel like you trust and you do got a little entanglement going on, you know what I'm saying? Like, do your thing, but I'm telling you right now, it's, it's just not, it never leads anywhere good. Like, someone gets feelings, or somebody gets hurt, or something happens, you know what I mean? Like, it never leads to anything good, and you never feel good about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, guys, that's why they say that a lot of guys, like, they'll have that, like, realization after they actually, you know, ejaculate. Like, they're like, what did I even do? I feel nasty myself. Like, we don't even know each other, girl. Like, post nut clarity. <laughs> yes yes that post not, that, that's the name the post not clarity baby so Hits. with women it, it's the same difference right like i said we have these conversations at brunch like girls will be like yeah i met this guy then i don't know why i did that like now i feel in the end up crying or being upset and i'm just like the first three months are the hardest okay first three months that's it if you need the wiki wiki a little bit a little dj whatever like whatever you gotta do but i would suggest even staying away from that you know what i mean like i would suggest really like Honing in on that power, like when you feel the urge for something like that, go take a cold ass shower and then go do something productive. I'm telling you right now, like you are going to feel amazing because when you do give yourself to that person, sex is gonna one feel way better, way better because you're gonna take your time. You're gonna let that person know your body head to toe. You're gonna know them head to toe. Like you're gonna get so comfortable that you'll be able to like do anything. You know what I mean? But also like your spiritual senses will heighten because all that energy you're exchanging with someone you're keeping internally and especially for men practice retention okay even if you're somebody who likes to you know what i'm saying practice 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 that's just my tidbit to that to add on is like i think that's a big one i think people get involved with people because the sex is so good that they end up being in a relationship and then it is toxic and they don't leave because the sex is good like that will really keep a lot of y'all soul ties everything baby especially if you're bending you into a pretzel girl i know but let it go <laughs> let it go <laughs> you're gonna teach somebody else how to bend you like a pretzel who actually love your ass like you know just i'm saying i'm telling you and, and for y'all men women be succubuses so don't let that girl drain you. And can if she not your girl, keep it in your pantalones. I don't think nobody's gonna listen to that. Part. <laughs> they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. But I promise y'all. Why y'all think I'm but so damn happy? It, I'm, just, I'm so damn happy. I'm so damn happy. I swear I'm so damn happy because I've been doing things that like I feel like most people don't do. Like I really am like a black sheep. I really am like everybody's going that way. I'm like guys, actually it's this way. You guys are about to fall off a cliff, and they're like, bah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but is life? Listen, the the game of life is complicated, but once you get it, it's swift. And you know, he he got kind of spicy with me last night because I told him that I don't believe that anything bad happens to me anymore. And he's just like, what do you mean? Like, this? <laughs> but the, my point to that, my <laughs> slow though, but I, you're adorable. I like it. I like it. My boy, yeah, right. The spiciness. You guys like it too. <laughs> um, my point to that was like more so of like again this new age. Like everybody thinks it's manifestation, whatever. I'm more, I'm more think of it like like God has a blanket over me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I might bump into things, whatever. But like wholeheartedly, I just like what I see in my life is I really feel like one day and mark my words because I'll call you first. Now you know I'll call him first. 
I feel like one day I'm gonna wake up and it's not even about like, oh, I'm gonna be famous and viral. I really feel like my life is just gonna be completely different. Like I feel like I feel like God wants something to happen to me so that it is a testimony. Cause my life, you know a little bit about me from last night. Yeah. It's been wild. You know what I mean? My my life has been wild since I came out the coaching. But when God turns it all around fully, because right now I'm like, eh, when I come all the way back, people usually think, oh, 180. No, 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 I'm coming back. But it's going to be different. And like, God wants me to spread the word of his mercy, of his of His graciousness, of how much he loves me because he loves everybody. And you could take that house. If you, if you want to like praise a pine cone tree right now, that's you. It will lead you the right way to whatever is good for you. I'm just telling you what led me to be in this damn happy. You know what I'm saying? This glow you guys see. This is really me just basking in it. It's beautiful. It works. Mm -hmm. It works. Thank you very, very fucking much. I appreciate you guys for listening in. Um, yeah, a lot of you guys, whenever I start making episodes short, you know, do we request for them to be longer. And this is going to be one of those things. So <laughs> thank you for tuning in. I'm Chance. That girl, Luli. Again, all social media platforms. Thank you again, Chance. This was dope. Yeah.